Hi everyone, this is Harshni here at Aspinall Solutions and I'm back with another video. And this video is in continuation with my last video of how to set up a service of integration with AWS Lambda. So once you have the AWS Lambda and the rest message set up, uh, I'm going to show you how you can use the rest message responses in ServiceNow workflows and also use it to update records in ServiceNow tables. So before going to that, I'm quickly going to review the steps of setting up the ServiceNow integration with AWS Lambda. So firstly, as we're going to use uh, Lambda, I'm just go ahead and create a Lambda function in um, the AWS. And then um, you have three options to for the code entry type, either code edit inline or upload a zip file or from S3. I'm going to use a code edit inline for just for example, uh, code. And I'm going to select the runtime as Python. And make sure you give the handler information correct here as um, the Lambda function is a function file name and dot Lambda handler is a method name. So make sure you get this right, else it can lead to an error. And then have the I just have a small code which is basically I'm getting the uh, parameter from the request URL of the rest message and I'm giving it back to service now. And once you have that set up, uh, you create an execution role with which has permissions to access AWS Lambda and uh, save the function. Once you have the function, you need to trigger the API gateway. So create a new API, have a deployment stage and security options. And once you have that, you need to create a method. So I'm going to use the get method here and there are other methods available. So and uh, associate the Lambda function that you have created with the get method. And uh, and one more imp important step is uh, you need to set up a body mapping template here. So it's usually in the get method, you have a body, a body mapping templates option where you can select the content type and please select the content type as the application hash JSON and uh, add this mapping template. This will automatically generate a template for us and uh, select method request path, sorry, method request pass through and save it. This is done because uh, as you can see in the code, we are trying to use the uh, token or the parameter that has been sent from the request message using this event or uh, variable. So in order to access the parameters in this way, you need to set up the template for the API of the get method. So make sure you set up the template and there are other ways to do this too as Lambda proxy integration and this is one of that ways. And once you have that set up uh, and deploy the API, you get the invoke URL from uh, the stages, the set of the deployment stage and the get method, you have the URL generated use this, uh, to use the URL in the rest message calls. So once you have that, go to the service now, create the rest message and in the endpoint, um, give the URL that has been generated and when you are passing parameters, make sure you give it a uh, token or whatever the parameter name and substitute the values. And also you have a test run that can be done in this message call so make sure you get the test message and the response from that okay so once you have this all set up i'm going to show uh, a small workflow that i've created to demo the uh, usage of the rest message call in service now so this is a simple uh, workflow where i've used a rest message call and uh, i'm using the value to update the record uh, in the task table of incident so this basically uh, triggers the workflow on the creation of a new incident and uh, it updates the, the value that has got as the rest message of in the task table that has been created for this incident. So I'm going to uh, quickly demonstrate the, uh, the idea that I've been trying to accomplish using this workflow. So you go to incident, you create a network, a new record. So I'm going to uh, just give a sample network issues with Wi-Fi and I'm going to submit this. So this uh, triggers the workflow and uh, we'll see what the workflow has done. So task, I'm going to task table. So task.list and as you can see it has created a task and uh, as you can see it has updated the category variable in the task with the message that we have got from the rest message response. So let's see how this is done. Uh, so this workflow uh, triggers and uh, there's a run script that basically executes the rest message execution. So here, so first I'm getting the um, short description from the incident table and make sure you convert it to dot to string because basically the current dot short description is of type object. So you need to convert it to, to string to use the value. And once you have that, 
and so this step is to ensure that um, so okay so basically the URL uh, doesn't need to should not have spaces in it so as we have a request uh, token uh, performance issues with or whatever so it's a sentence which has spaces included in it you cannot really send uh, such type of tokens in the urls so the http connection is not set up when you have the spaces and it has to be encoded so this uh, javascript function uh, does the work for us so it encodes the url uh, by converting the spaces usually it converts into percentage 20 or a plus sign so uh, this javascript function does the work for us make sure you do this else the http connection is not set up through the rest message and once you have that uh, you need to set up the rest message uh, it's just basically instantiating the rest message and uh, i'm setting the uh, string parameter which is the token parameter with the encoded uh, uri and uh, this basically executes a response uh, sorry rest message and get gives me the response and to get the response uh, value we need to set response dot get body so now my value is in response body and i'm using this in storing it in a scratchpad variable workflow scratchpad variables uh, named category so i've got the rest message response and stored it in a scratchpad variable and now i'm going to create a task for that incident and uh, I'm going to update the task variables category with the value that we have got. So task dot u category and uh, giving it the uh, scratchpad variable value. So you are, and also you can even um, update the other records uh, like you just need to set up a glide record instantiation and uh, update the values accordingly. So yeah, so this is a simple workflow of you how you can use the message calls and uh, set up uh, the update of records in uh, service now tables and uh, to get the script of the address message uh, set up in the workflow you can basically get this from the get method you have an um, option here preview script usage so this basically gives us the uh, script that has to be used to set up the call so it's like, so it's basically the same one that i've used there and make sure you give the default the names uh, properly and uh, yeah so this is how you set up the response age call so yeah so this is the end of this video and um, hope you you liked it and uh, yeah thank you for watching